Alright, what is up everybody? I hope you're having a great day. Today we're doing part two to our Roblox Advanced Scripting series. Today we're going to be looking at math.random, so I'm excited for this tutorial. Let's dive right in. So, math.random is a super helpful uh, tool, I guess, function that I use all the time in scripting. Uh, what I'm going to use it for mainly today is um, just for tables, but I'll show you how that's really helpful for the game, okay? So, uh, yeah, so what is math.random? Well, let me just go ahead and uh, show you using in command again. We used this in our first part. Uh, but let me just say, well, actually, we got to assign a variable. We can say uh, local random number. So math.random gives you a random number, okay? And you can choose the range, all right? So let's just say uh, random number equals math.random. And then you do parentheses, right? And then you put the minimum number and the maximum number, okay? So it's going to pick a number between 1 and 10, all right? Because I set it to 1 and 10. Let's just go ahead and print random number. And let me go ahead and uh, make sure the output is also open. Let's just run it. It picked 1. This time it picked 2. This time it picked 2 again. This time it picked 6. So we can see that it's running. Let me just clear the output real quick so you can see it. It picked 7. It picked 7 again. <laughs> it picked 1. So it's picking a, a random number between 1 and 10, all right? So we can change this uh, to be some thing between, uh, let's just do 5 and 20, for example, and we can run this, and now it's chosen 14, chosen 6, 20, 18, 19, 17, as you can see, it just, it, it the, the list is infinite um, of possibilities, because numbers go on forever, you could add just a 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, right, let me just add a ton of zeros here, and now we've been given... 99,999,527, nope, 354,775, uh, and then let me just, whoops, drag that right there. And uh, now I'm going to use non in command, okay? I'm going to use an actual script. So let's insert a script into server script service. Perfect. And let's just say local parts equals to game dot workspace dot parts, whoops, colon get children. So let's just go ahead and print parts real quick. Um, so I can show you what get children does. This is a little mini lesson in here. Get Chil children makes a table with all of these things inside of it. So when we have uh, parts colon get children, so it's looking for the workspace, the parts folder, and it's going to get every single thing in here, and it's going to make a table with all of these items. Okay. So let me open up the output so you guys can see it. Let me go ahead and run this, and as you can see we have this little table that's going to print as soon as my computer loads. <laughs> Alright, there we go. Uh, right here. And let's open up the table and it has one equals part, part, part. We didn't rename them, but if we had renamed them, we could do that, right? So, as you can see, that is a table, right? This, uh, These parts is a table. So we can get rid of this print parts. And let's just go ahead and pick a random number now. Uh, local number equals to math.random and there are a lot of different math functions. There's rad, abs, a cos, asin, a ten. There's a lot of different math things you can do. But I'm just gonna do um, uh, random for today because that's pretty much the easiest one, and it, that's the one I use most of the time. Um, I don't know if I ever use any of the other math functions. Uh, maybe rarely. But let's just go ahead and pick a, num a random number between one and number of parts. So we can do this with a table, right? Uh, maybe we have this table with hi, comma, hello, comma, uh, and then we can say goodbye, comma, bye, and we can say number, well, let's just go ahead and say local my table equals to that, and we can just say uh, number, well, let's just go ahead and print number of my table. Let's go ahead and run this. And it will print four. So why is it printing four? It's because uh, it's it's picking a uh, it's number my table. So when you put a hashtag before the uh, table and then you put the table name right next to it, what it does is it 
takes the number of items that are in this table. So there are four items, so the number of my table is four, all right? So we can say local number equals to math.random one comma uh, number of parts. So we pick a random number between one and however many parts there are in this folder, right? So we can just say um, parts, square brackets, I'll explain this in a second, number dot brick color equals to brick color dot random, okay? Wow, that was a lot of work right there, or that was a lot right there that may not have made sense. Um, so let me try and break this down for you guys. When we say parts, so we can also with the table, right? We had our uh, local my table uh, equals to a table hi, hello, and I'm just going to do goodbye. I'm going to end it there. Oop. Goodbye. When we say my table two, all right, well, let's just say print my table two. What it's going to print is it's going to print the second item in the table, okay? We can put three here. It's going to put the third item in the table. We can put one here, all right? So by saying part number, we can find the part in this table and in this amount of parts, right, these four parts, we can find the part in that table that is the uh, num the random number we made. So, right, remember we picked a number between one and the amount of parts, so in this case it's between one and four, since there are four parts. And we're going to, uh, maybe it picked three, okay, maybe that's what the math.random picked. It's going to look at the table of parts, so all these, and it's going to find part three, okay, because this variable number is set to three because that's what math.random chose. We're just giving an example. So what it's going to do is it's going to loop through the parts. One, two, three. Oh, I found the third one in the table. And it's going to stop there and it's going to do what we told it to do. And then this this is just changing its color. You'll see in just a second. So let's go and run this. And it chose the first one. And as you can see, the color has changed. And uh, so that's how you do math.random. I'll give you another example in just a second. But let's go ahead and um, do a while loop with this, okay? So we can say while wait to, whoops, do, and let's put an end here. So every two seconds, it's going to change a part's color, and it's going to choose a random one to change. So let's go and run this. So as you can see, it's changed to blue. This one changed to yellow. Uh, that one changed to orange. It chose that one again. It chose that one again. Um, sometimes it repeats the, them. Here we go. We have that that changed again. Uh, there we go. Now they've all changed. So as you can see, it, it works really well. Uh, we can do this with the players even. We can just say, um, instead of local parts, we can change this to uh, local players equals game.players colon get players. Oops, not game dot player, players. Um, so that's just going to get a table of all the players, and we can say here number of players, and we can say uh, let's just say uh, local player name equals to players square brackets number dot name. So now we know what their name is because we looped through all the players and we found the one that has the name um, that. Uh, basically it has the name of this random number we chose and then we can just say um, I don't know game dot workspace dot uh, colon find first child player name because we're looking for the player in the workspace and then we can say dot head dot size equals to C frame dot or we can just say we can copy all this so it's their size plus vector three dot new three comma three comma three. All right. So it's going to resize their head. Let's go ahead and play it. Uh, let's just actually go ahead and wait five seconds. Uh, actually, I'm going to wait ten seconds because um, I take a little bit of time to load in when I'm recording, especially. Um, so if we wait ten seconds, it'll start randomly every time choosing a random player, and then morphing that player's head. So uh, let's go ahead and see if this works. There we go. It's changed mine because I'm the only player. It's the one it's choosing every single time. But if we had more players, it would continue to choose other people too. Uh, so if you don't understand that part, that is totally fine. I just want you to understand math.random chooses a number uh, between, uh, or chooses a number and you set the range. 
okay? And you can use that to find certain items in the table. So that is pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and we are ending again with another large head, <laughs> like our uh, Eat Interact. If you haven't checked out that video, you can go check that out. I also ended with this um, crazy script uh, in a different way. But uh, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please do subscribe and click that notification bell. And uh, yeah, uh, let me know what you guys would like to see in the comments. And uh, other than that, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.